Where John? Where John? Where John? 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 Where John? 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 And yes, it's episode twenty-one. No, it's not. I don't not. know if you know that. It can't be. It is. You're kidding me. I wish. Are you serious? That means. What does it mean? If you wanted to watch me draw and blather on with you for 21 hours after today. It's more than 21 hours. I know. Hey guys, who's here with us today? We're here and it's Monday. Today's a big day. It's Monday. It's Monday. We ate all the chocolate eggs. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Tony's got a stash. Ange was teasing me because I brought... (laughs) <laughs> a little bit of Easter to get me through the hour. Yes. That's it. That's going to get me. To... I bring the treasure. Bring the treasure. Hello, everyone. We are drawn. We drawn. are drawn. We are here. We are drawn. Well, this, and we're okay, here. This is where it gets dramatic. Done. Done, done, done. We are drawn. You're going to listen to listen to here. It's like a it's little ASMR. Just getting my candy ready. Get Just ready. unwrapping the candy. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Hey guys, what's going on? Another day. Another day of drawn to fantasy. A rainy day. It is. We missed you guys this weekend. It was a weekend. I'm um it's good to be back though, right, Ange? It's really good to be back. I'm your host, Tony Dietrich. I'm here with my Okay, this is my favorite part, you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My, let me think of some good good adjectives today. Um, um, let's see. You told me I smell good today. You do smell good today. You do. And I think I probably smell better. I don't know if good <laughs> is the word I would use, but I probably smell better. I, you know, I'm a guy. I kind of get down here in my hobbit hole and I'm like, I don't need to shower. It's been three or four days. What, what activities have I done? How sweaty can I get? You are uh, you are my deep thinking, oh. and um, not yeah. Oh, go for a rhyme. That's good. I like that. I like the rhyme. You are you're working on a new manuscript and you're thinking. Deep, you got some deep I am thoughts. Digging in, you guys. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Those of you celebrating Passover, those of you celebrating Easter. I hope you got lots of treats. I hope you enjoyed seder's. I hope um, you had egg hunts. All the things. All the things. And we watched Trolls World Tour. We watched Trolls World Tour. We promised we would, and we delivered on that promise. It was very entertaining. I hope you're entertained, too. Had a good weekend. Um, If you're just joining us, a quick recap before we get into our day. Hello in Poland. You may see a fairy here. You may see a a smaller logo. I was trying to figure out how to fill the screen when you're on your phone and you're looking at this. How best to fill the screen. And I thought about doing this horizontally, Ange, but you know, this is kind of a vertical piece. It's ultimately, when we get to the finish, it's going to be a very vertical piece. I haven't forgotten about these. For those who've been tuning in, I'm, I've still got them on my mind. They're just not important for what we're going to do today. And if you are just joining us for the first time today, we are designing a fairy uh, along the lines of the Spiderwick Chronicles. A sprite, if you will, and we spent all last week trying to figure out a sprite. We uh, came upon this one, a type of orchid sprite that was inspired uh, by um, Psychopsis papillo or papio, the butterfly orchid. So very excited about that. We sketched it and sketched it and sketched it again. On Friday, we did kind of a final drawing of the uh, design, kind of finalized some of the stuff, including the wing veination, which is where all the ving- veins go on the insect wings. I flipped it back and I printed it on some heavy paper. And today we're going to try to figure out what the colors are today, Ange, which I know is like your specialty. How does that work? Well, this is a uh, handsome fungus fairy that I painted a couple of years back um, for the Norman Rockwell exhibition. This was part of a giant fairy mobile installation. And although I knew I wanted this to have Halloween type colors, AKA orange and black, I didn't quite know where those colors fell. And although this looks like the solution, it did go through other 
iterations along the way. So I just print out the sketch on paper and I put some paint down very quickly to try to figure it out. And when I do figure it out, what I do now is I make notes. This is a, uh, the recipe, if you will, for tinsel from the broken ornament. This is the order to paint her and what paints I need to use to take a sketch like this and turn it into a painting like this and to keep the colors consistent. So just to give you an idea of how it can become almost like a recipe, which I thought you would appreciate, Ange, very similar to uh, baking something, cooking. I don't know, I just do dishes. But I've, I've, I've heard that's what goes on in the kitchen. Hey, exciting news. Phoenix James received the creepy SpongeBob. I'm sorry. Over the weekend. Nice. He loved all the pictures inside, and his sister loved the baby owl bear. Very nice. Glad you enjoyed the trash. We'll give some more trash away today. I have sent all the trash out except for if, if poor Molly Porridge, Partridge. If Molly Partridge is listening, I promise. She is. Oh, Molly, how are you? I promise I will get to the post office this week. It's just been a week. Uh, last week was a bit of a week. Lots of things. Angie and I are kind of, we're doing 20 things at once last week. So I will go to the post office this week and drop it off. And I'm going to start with kind of figuring out colors. Now, we use... Why do you look, question. Why do you, do you prefer to test color on paper rather than digitally? We've done it both ways. Yeah. But... What I do like when we, what we do today is if I like the color, yeah. I can write down the tube of paint. Now, what paints do I use? I get this question a lot, right? What paints do I use? I use Holbein's Acrylic Gouache. I have three of these bins next to me, and maybe I'll slide the phone over later in the uh, episode and show it to you. Uh, Holbein makes these. They are a mixture of acrylic paint and gouache paint. So if you painted with gouache and didn't care for it because it was what I like to call a little slippery, in other words, you lay a color down, you put another glaze on top of it, it starts moving the previous layer around. This stuff doesn't do that as much. I've been using it for 20 years, painted most of my children's books with it, many magic cards with it. And um, so what will happen today, though, Mary Ange... Mary Blair used gouache, too, right? Mary Blair, many artists used gouache uh, during the 1950s. I would guess... I would, I would guess that many production artists, as well as probably many illustrators like for Golden Books did, because it dries very quick, it's very fast, it's easy to work with, this stuff is super opaque. Um, but what we'll do today is if we like a color, like for instance, if you really like the way that red looks, I can note on here that we used a scarlet. That's different than a computer where I'm going to have to still eyeball. We may find a cool palette, but I, now I'm going to have to match the color of the computer printout with paint, whereas today... We'll just figure you it all look out. Directly with... at your Pantones, essentially. Yes, yes. And as I told you, if you've been listening, my color printer's been on the fritz. I've been working on it slowly, but sure. I have a printing repair head kit coming. Like, I have to clean the printer heads. They're all clogged because I don't use it enough. Anyway, our fairy was inspired by this orchid. However, we are not married to these colors. This kind of, kind of greeny yellow with a... A very orange kind of vermilion patterning. That's the great thing about this is we can now use any colors on our uh, fairy. Now I'm going to give Ange the orchid book and see what she comes up with. Ooh, okay. In the meantime, I'm putting it all on me. I'm putting it on you. I'm going to go to insects. There's some terrific insect palettes, and I've got tons of books on insects. But the thing is, you can literally use the palette from anything to kind of figure out what color you think. Um, your fairy should be. So I look at dragonflies. There's some really, I love this with the amber and the brown and the hint of blue. That's kind of fun. Uh, this is great with the grasshoppers. I'm sure you may have seen this. We see these in Florida a lot where they're kind of a brown or, or a gray. And then when they fly, you see this beautiful flash of color in the underwings. Kind of nice. That's a good color, these harlequin bugs. So I'm looking to see if anything strikes me. Now, I love these. This is a plant hopper. They're very light colored, kind of almost a minty green, very pale colors. This one's got a beautiful color. I could awesome. see this palette on, on our fairy. I can see that. this, though, for your patterning? Yeah, like a red. So what Ange found in the orchid, she found a blush colored orchid so a lot of pink and yellow and orange and i'd say almost 
It's a very cold red on the edges, so almost like a crimsony versus a scarlet. So that's a thought. We can try one in that. You It'd hold be that. Cool with that kind of. A, I don't know. It's like that color you're pulling up. It's almost like just a this hint of glow to it. It's, mm -hmm, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's gossamer. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's crazy colors. Um, so why? I, I now look. We could have chose these colors beforehand. Yep. Yeah. But I wanted you to see real time how this process works. And I may flip past the color. You may be like, oh my gosh, you got to go back. That color of that ladybug is the color. And, uh, and hopefully you'll see now kind of how my brain starts to put things together. We talked earlier um, a few episodes back about the silhouette of one thing and the texture of another. Here it is, that same kind of thinking. We've used flowers as inspiration, but now we're looking at um, also insects for coloration. That's not kind of a nice... I love that little bit of icy blue in there. That's kind of fun. So it's brown with gold and then a dark, dark, dark with an icy blue. That's kind of cool. I mean, can you imagine like the gold here? And I don't know how it's going to look. I can imagine how it's going to look, but I won't know until I start putting paint down. And we may do a few before we get there. That's kind of cool. Here's the thing I want to point out. There are no wrong answers. No, this, okay? this is all this aesthetic, is right? Use your own adventure. So any of these things would work. I mean, there are countless combinations that would be really successful as a final image. Yep. But, you know, it's really like, what are you excited to paint? Yes. What do you want to try? Maybe you're like, you know what? Those are the colors that I usually go to. Let me try something different. And I'm looking, this is actually similar to the orchid, this Io Moth. It's kind of got a gold and a rusty color, but what I do love is this beautiful dark blue, which could be kind of fun. And just making I'm not I'm not so sure face. I also love these colors for this moth. A lot of cold brown, but then you have these huge pops of like really warm. I like that Luna moth green too. Well, it's funny you say that because the first thing I really gave pause to was this plant hopper. Right here, these plant hoppers that have I like that a lot. kind of the same colors. Yeah. I almost like this yellowy one. Yeah. And a <laughs> Molly said, "Just do them all. We don't mind mind watching." Just go, just just do. What I we're like gonna the do? Pink, crimson, and yellow too. I'm deaf. I'm into it. <laughs> what is? Someone said, "What does Lexi recommend?" <laughs> yeah, really. Well, let's start with yours that you picked, and we'll okay. move on. Now, I'm gonna keep this page here. Okay. And then let's um let's start with yours, Ange. All right. Where did I? Where did it go? Ooh, that's so pretty too. I love that. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. It was back this way. But this is, there's a great spread on this. That it's like literally like, there you go. Pick a palette, right? Right. That I mean, how so cool, cool is that? That green right. one's really cool. So, I get in when I've done interviews. I get asked so many times. You know, what's your inspiration? What do you use for inspiration? And I say nature, and I really mean it in that um, this is where I find my palettes. Well, and, and it can be a photograph of the ocean or a sunset too well, as well. You know, it's not just these. And here's the thing. Once you kind of start, if this was a story, right, you would ask yourself, where is this taking place? So if this was, say, you know, a, you're, it's a spiderwick fairy, we're going to go, oh, it's in New England. Well, there's probably not a lot of not orchids. Not a lot of orchids. So you're going to maybe want to choose something that's more, you know, based in the region of where your characters reside. Yeah, orchids are more tropical, right? Yes. I mean, they, they like a more tropical climb, so I'm guessing this is definitely a fairy that resides closer to the equator. There it is. Yes. So this is Phalaen, Phalaenopsis, the uh, Bueno Blush, Buena Blush. You can see my Spanish is amazing. We actually have those down in Florida. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start with the Buena Blush. I'm going to give it a quick um, piece of tape to keep it from falling. I think you could pair it with your, like, leaf hopper. Uh, well, well, let's just start and see where we land. I always lay a little bit of antique white down on everything I do because I like everything looking old and antique -y. So I'm going to start with that. And I'm just going to get a quick blop of that in that I can work mm, with. That's a nice cup of tea. That's a nice cup of tea. And then I'm going to start kind of just playing, really. this is There's really no, as you said, there's no right answer. So this will be a bit of a, um, a process. So I'm going to wet it first. 
You can see I'm not precious with this. Why? I have three others printed out next to it. I used a heavy, I used that heavy 32 pound paper that I like to draw on. Yeah, I just printed it right out. You can see the ink, I'm fortunate in that the ink stayed. I am also not precious with this. The whole idea is if I mess this up, there's another printout ready to go. And the paper's gonna corrugate and it's gonna curl and I don't care. It's really about kind of figuring out what colors are going to work for this fairy that we have mm. newly discovered. So I'm putting this um, little base down, this little base coat to start with. So Ange, if I was Bob Ross, I probably would have done this already, huh? Before the show started or what? put your... done all this? No, I don't think so. I think this is your process. I think this is great. To you want to see how I do it? This is how I do it. I now, so. I can also, if I I'm... I mean, I will say that yellow underpainting that kind of cream under that is so you. Oh yeah, this is like my jam. This is like everything has that kind of Antique. life underneath it. It's kind of creamy. Now I'm gonna put it on, it's very thin. But classic painters use yellow underpainting. I'm a brown, I use brown for underpainting as you are going to soon see how I was trained. Um, and I am not, admission here, I am not the best with color. I'm really not actually, believe it or not. I mean, I, I'm good at looking and finding a palette as you saw from nature and from photographs and things, but I, um, I'm i not terrific at making a, you know, a palette from a triad of colors. I don't use a color wheel. I tend to just mix. I usually find a, a primary color that I really like that's going to be the dominant color in the painting and I will mix it into every co subsequent color that I add to the painting to kind of harmonize the color. Um, if you really want to learn color theory, and we, I, I was taught it at school, I just don't didn't retain a whole lot of it. I mean, I have... Just so you know, on my phone, I don't know about you guys. Is okay. it dragging? It's dragging a little bit. Is it pixely? I'm not getting the error. Um, here's your standard color wheel. It's a lot. Um, here's ways you can do, you know, I understand things like a complementary color. These are the opposite colors. And then you can paint using a triad of colors. Um, Jim, if you're, if you really want to learn more, um, about this, I would suggest checking out James Gurney's, uh, YouTube, uh, channel. He is terrific with color. He understands color and he's really good at edu educating you on color theory. I'm more of a, um, I don't know, bag, a lot, bag of tricks, right, Ange? Absolutely. Well. All right, so, and on that note, my bag of tricks generally consists of cool shadows, warm highlight. It's one of my favorite things. Warm highlights, um, because I love the, I love the, I love the idea of like a warm glow. It, it breathes life into anything I'm painting. Maxfield Parrish was a master of warm light on it's his like paintings. It's like magic hour, right? When you're a yes. photographer yes. and you have the sun setting or the sun rising, you have all that warmth of light. Yes. And it really illuminates skin tones. So to contrast that, I tend to do a cool shadow. And when the warm overlaps on the cool, it's going to it's gonna neutralize those colors and make kind of a gray, but it'll be a rich gray. So um, I'm going to do, I always do the glow at the very end. So right now, this is just about dry. I'm gonna hit it with a hairdryer to speed it up. So maybe we can get more than one of these done today. And this process, if I was doing this on my own, would be fast. Be down, I would be doing this, to be honest with you, on a normal day, if, I, if this was on a deadline, I would do a series of these in the morning, perhaps after my morning coffee, try to get a bunch of them done before lunch show them to Ange, and hopefully after lunch, be starting a final. So we're, we're kind of spreading this process. We're kind of blowing it apart and, and doing it every day. So you guys can see. I like a, um, this is one of my favorite colors for shadow, ash blue. I'm gonna match that. What medium is the undercoat in? That is a... That was acrylic, actual, just straight up acrylic paint. There it is. Um, this is unbleached titanium white. So there it is before they they bleach it out. I use that one a lot. And I'm gonna add uh, Burnt Umber's too dark. 
I usually use raw umber, and again, just bear with me just because I haven't painted in a while, so my paints are not as organized as I'd like them to be. This is usually my start. Very cool colors, right? No warmth here. This is going to be my... I'm going to mix these two guys together. A little raw umber with a touch of ash blue to really cool it way down. For your shadows. Yeah, I'm going to use that for my shadows. It's going to be very liquidy, as you will soon see. I'm switching from a larger brush to a smaller. These are not fancy brushes. These are cheap. Look, it's literally one of those artist loft brushes you get at Michael's. Mm -hmm. um, very fancy. Very fancy, just because I'm pretty rough with my brushes, so I don't bother. My mom bought me some nice brushes one year and I destroyed them, so I feel really bad about that. I'll show you a little bit what's going on here so you can actually really see. So here's my palette. You can see here's where I added the umber. It how is diluted are you getting the paint? very diluted. You can see how thin it is. It needs to be translucent. So I've added the blue and you can see I'm just, I'm mixing it in. Here's where it's much more concentrated if I need to. And here's where I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna keep adding water. I want it nice and thin and I'm gonna test it. I always keep a test sheet. Now my test sheets are fairly, here's a test sheet. I'm gonna have it right to the side. So it's right off screen. And I can test the color and the opacity, which is important for me. So if it seems too opaque, I'll thin it out. Let me do that on screen, because you guys, I want you to see exactly what I mean. Opacity versus translucency. Yes, if it's too opaque, I don't like it. So you can see here, I've tested it. It's perfect translucent. Originally, you can see here, that's my first stroke I had. It was a little too heavy for my liking. I added some water. Now it's where I like it. So that's what I do to test it before I put it down. I do the same thing when I'm inking with a fancy pen. So I'm just sketching where I think the shadows are going to fall. On my right, I don't know. I'm just kind of getting it in. It's very sketchy. I don't want to overpaint. I'm honestly not thinking. This is a study. That's it. Yeah, this isn't. This is not a final painting. You're not, not precious with this. This is all about. The no, I mean, listen. If I blow it, who cares? I'm gonna. We'll do another one. You know, I got the added fortune that if I blow this halfway through, I can actually watch the video and see what I did. Usually, I don't even have that luxury. I'm actually just gonna grab the paint that I put on my little test. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put all this in shadow. So very brown, a very cool, very thin bluey brown you can see it why don't you clean off your palette uh, uh amy mccristy skidmore asked hey you know what i do i'll let it get really thick and then i will peel, the whole thing. peel it off it is so gratifying <laughs> don't tell sophia that because she'll start peeling it off she loves <laughs> peeling like just like you Ange. kevin sylvester wants to know is this garbage you you never know for those of you who don't know, we're, we're, we have a great viewership today. Our viewership is rising. Wow. And we're going places. We are going places. Even though we're going nowhere, <laughs> we're, we're going, going places. We're going nowhere together. Yes, to go um, places. And uh, so some of you guys are new here, that means. For those of you who don't know, we do a little something special at the end of the day, and we give away our garbage. Yes. That means all the stuff that I would normally have thrown away, like... Recycled bits, things like this thing. Uh, oh, you can't see. Um, the drawn to fantasy thing that we used at the beginning, sketches, things like that. So a mini can vouch. I have been including original sketches, so you never know. Uh, by the way, I'm going to also take a moment, just while you're you're taking a sip of your tea here. What do you tea, mean? And that needs a second to dry that anyway. That needs a second to dry. Can we also talk about the drawn to fantasy fans of drawn to fantasy Facebook page? Are you joking me? Let's give a big round of applause to our pal Emily C. Martin for hooking it up and making it happen. You guys, we have an official fan page and there is some awesome art that people have been posting. Amazing. Ange, take them back to Friday. I just need a little bit of a recap of how that all happened. Well, okay. So we were having a moment, right? We were having the moment. I think somebody actually said... Is everyone here an artist? Okay, yep. And then some people replied saying like, yes, I'm an artist. Yes, I'm an illustrator. 
here's my Instagram handle. And I realized what was happening. And of course, day after day, we were seeing so many familiar faces, not seeing them literally, their names and chatting. And it was like, we're, we're building a, a community here. You guys are coming together and not only inspiring us, but inspiring one another and engaging with one another. And so I said, why don't we start a Facebook page or a page where everybody could connect and share their artwork, offer critiques if they would like, accept yep. critiques if they would like. And lo and behold, Emily C. Martin said, done, done it, done, did it. Did it during there. the course of the, the stream, right? It was done before we went off that day on yes. Friday. I will also add that I was at the same time also getting um, private messages both on Facebook, on Instagram of, hey, I've been tuning in. I've been drawing along. What do you think? And, you know, I'm tr I try to reply to everyone who does this, but I get woefully behind because there's so much other stuff going on. And so I, I felt like for those who really want that, really deep feedback because usually all I can I have got the time for is a thumbs up and keep going and that's awesome or try this or think about that I'm gonna put just a little more blue grabbing a little blue here um oh yeah if you guys want to post the link to that if somebody wants to post that that would yes. be awesome it's on my page though if you're tuning in from some other strange like maybe you're on just your Facebook home feed it's on the um such it's on my Facebook page. Such great art. You guys are posting such cool art because, you know, it's we've crazy. just been seeing your name. So now to actually see the art that you guys are creating. To go with it. To go Amazing. With it, a lot of it inspired by stuff that we're doing here. Yep. It's so cool. So cool. So, Ange, what I have now, I'm going to lighten some of this. So here I'm using a wet, I took a wet brush and I just dried it. So now it's clean and it's a sponge. So you can see here, look. See, I'm lifting the paint back out. It was getting a little too dark, and I don't want... I want your attention to stay right in this area, right this here. This is not about color at all. This is just about tone. shadow and light. Yeah. That's it. Tone building and value. Tone. tone and values. That's all I'm building right now. I'm going to let it dry for a second because now I am going to start introducing a little bit of color into it and kind of figure it out. So I don't need to make notes of this part. This part is pretty part and parcel for me. Pretty standard Tony D. <sighs> color stuff. I'm going to speed up the drying a little bit. If you've seen my time lapses, now you know why and this hair dryer comes out. So you know, obviously, we're talking about, if we're talking about value and shadow and light, we know that the things that are going to be closer to us are going to be lighter, usually. No, and, not always. Well, I mean, well, obviously, if you're, but like that fit, that translucent wing is lighter. The wing in back of that is darker, yeah. which then will create depth. Yes. Let me speed this up. I just want to keep it going so I can keep painting for you during our time. All right, that looks pretty good. Now um, I'm going to refer to Angela's suggestion of this orchid. So how do I do that? Well, I start generally from... Here, I'm going to make notes. How do I paint? Uh-oh, broadcast interrupted. No, I think we're good. I saw it glitch, but it, it, it's oh, it's just flickering, so I'm not seeing a whole lot. So what do I mean by light, light to dark? I start, it's easier to get darker and build color. It's harder. I don't like, I don't like the, putting an artificial white on here. I like using the white of the paper. So I want the light, the light in this room and the light, when you view this piece of art, to penetrate the pigments of color, hit this white and bounce back over putting a glob of white paint on. Okay. All right. Sorry, it looks like we dropped out for a minute. Sorry, guys. Don't know what happened there. We got overloaded with awesome. Yeah, we're busy, and we, we have quite a few uh, watchers today, which we're thankful for, so thanks for joining us. Absolutely. So all that said, Ange, I am going to I'm going to do a little, um, I'm going to mix a thin bit of ivory white with a little bit of titanium white, because this is a very cool white. It's a very different color white than what I'm using here, right? You can see. And then I'll start putting in this pink, and then I'm gonna do this yellow, and then I'm gonna do this kind of orangey color, and then the last thing I'm gonna do are these really dark scarlet bits. So that's gonna be the plan of attack, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna start with Wait for it. I'm gonna use a little ivory white. 
and I'm going to mix this ivory white with, if I can find it here, somewhere I have a titanium white. By the way, please feel free to share that you are uh, joining along with us today so that uh, Mixing these two. we can let everybody know that we're hanging out together. We're doing it, Ange. Oh, and of course, if you share that you're hanging out with us, that's essentially entering to win some of our garbage. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Now I'll show you what I'm doing here on the palette. Why I'm mixing. Got a whole bunch of water. So here's the titanium white. I put uh, more than I would normally use, but I'm doing it for sake of that. I've got actually a little bit of the antique white should work just like the ivory. See that? Just a nice off-white. Why do I do this? Because to me, the only thing that I would ever paint this color is literally the sun at high noon. <laughs> I just don't use pure white and pure black ever. I'll go to a sepia or I'll go to an ivory white, but I never go to pure white. Pure white to me is like literally light radiating from a star. Um, so there you go. And if I was painting a star at night, I would probably put a touch of blue in this. So I'm using, you can see it's just creating a really nice kind of an antique white, an off white, but it's certainly not the color that we laid down on our base. So now I'm gonna put that on. It's very kind of milky, like my tea. And I'm guessing Ange. Hello in the Netherlands. Ange, I'm guessing we're gonna do her sleeves in this. So I'm just laying it in. You can see it's a little more opaque, but it's still thin. It's a little more opaque, but it's just going to, I'm thinking that the breast plate and this is gonna be where that yellow is and that orange is all gonna happen there. So this is all gonna be this. And we're going to do the, we're going to do the pink kind of, we're going to figure out where that pink integrates. Adeline Martin said, not even for the light of the eyes. The, the little white reflection sometimes, but not always. Yeah. That little white dot in the eye sometimes, but not always. Sometimes you'll go and, and pop in those little highlights. Hello. Uh, when in Hanoi. Wow. 2 30 AM there. Holy cow. Holy thanks cow. For thanks for us. staying up. I hope you're safe and well. We're all in um, the upside down in a crazy uh, reality, but we're going to get through it. And um, It's nice to have something predictable to look forward to in this time. That's what uh, I realized. Like, to have this scheduled every day at 3 p.m., we know this is going to happen. And that kind of, for me, offers this bit of normalcy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in this, so... Well, I think, uh, you know, humans are creatures of habit, right? Patty, I'm giving you a shout out in, uh, in Scotland where fairies originate. Absolutely. Yes, they did. You know, as a matter of fact, I was working on an FAQ. I have FAQs, frequently asked questions on my site. And we get the, our, do you believe in fairies? Do you think fairies are real question a lot, right? We get, I get it emailed a lot. We get it in fan letters a lot. Kids will write us from school. You know, my teacher told me to write you. It was my first, usually the number one question. So I, uh, we, and we've addressed it here uh, live before. And Patty from Scotland, I am thinking of Andrew Lang, who was a very noted Scottish folklorist who collected some of my favorite books, like the Rainbow Fairy books, the Red Fairy book, Blue Fairy book. But he also... Uh, finished a book by a man named, I believe, George MacDonald called The Secret Commonwealth. Of, and it was all accounts of uh, encounters with fairies, gnomes, and goblins written in the 1600s. And Andrew Lang brought it into print uh, in the 19th century. I'm going to hit this with the air dryer real quick. So you can see it's kind of like it's a little milky. It's it's almost like I whitewashed it, Ange. Hello, Italy. Enrico. Ciao. Hello, my friends in Italy. I hope you're well. You can see I'm just... Just want a little bit of this to dry. It came down pretty wet. I definitely think the wings are green, Ange. The, the outer cover, the outer wings. Yeah. Yeah. I like 
almost dry. This is definitely part of the process is kind of hitting it with the hair dryer to speed it up. Brazil in the house. All right. And everybody here today, guys. That's awesome. Now, Ange, I can go. I can see a wet spot. Does that matter? Yeah, it's all right. Okay. It's still, again, it's a little. Just because I'm from this side, I can see that a little. Now, I'm looking at your orchid reference, Ange. Yes. Now, I can go like a light magenta with it mm. or curveball. Whoa. Which, that purple, well, both of those colors would look really great. With look at that. But also, look at that, because there's a little bit of yellow already. Yes. Well, a little bit. There's yes. a lot of bit of yellow. So the purple loves this, right? It's, they're opposite colors. If we go back to our color wheel. Where did I put that darn thing? And we go to opposite colors. So there's just the complementary colors. And if I go to perp, violet, which is where lavender would be from. The opposite is yellow. Well, and it's funny because so, you know, I, so for those of you We are using know, a color wheel. <laughs> I was a makeup artist for many years, and those rules even apply in makeup. If you have dark kind of purpley circles underneath your eye, you're always going to want to use a yellow-based concealer to neutralize it. So it works the same way and kind of opposite. So I'm also looking at this. So I'm thinking... If we add that really golden yellow and we add these kind of crimsony reds and we've got this kind of vermilion, I mean, it might be cool if this goes to more of a lavender. It might be kind of, it's all going to be in the same. Yeah. Want to try well, it? I well, mean, you know what? Let's we'll, try it. Let's try it. I definitely it. want that, some gr that green in there. The worst that can happen. Oh, well, I could put the green in first. That orchid green, the color of the leaves. Yes. It might not be a bad idea to put that in first because it's such a present and we agree that it's green. Like, we both agreed, like, right off the bat. So I think that's a decision that's done. Yes. So the question is, of course... Green? Well, this is like a yellowy green with some little spots. Mm. And I'm sure there's other greens. Well, we I know like there's... that green right there. Like, where? Who? Where? Like, well, I like that kind of Luna Moffy. Oh, the real light green. Like, that's a like a minty... Oh my god, that looks like a spider. I like that green too. The green of the orchid or the green of its leaf? Its leaves. The leaves. So it's very yellow. All right, let's try it. We'll see. We'll see. I was thinking darker. Mm. Let's try. Well, we can always darken it up. I do right. love I love the Luna Moth green and I love the Luna Moth green with purple. Just saying. So that is Whoa, insane. That's crazy. So I don't use stuff like this too often. Which look at the tube. See how big it is? It's like barely been used. In fact, I don't use green a whole lot. I'm instead going to go with straight up green. Dane, I didn't get to try the vanilla ice cream Fritos combo. This is straight up green. It's the, disregard the thing. I think it got bleached somehow. I think that, that's really the color. Here, I'll show you. That's the green you're thinking? Well, hold on. The base. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to thin it out, and I'm going to add yellow to I it. I was going to say that needs yellow. Right, but I'm not just going to add regular old yellow out of the tube. Oh no, Ange. Oh no, honey. I've got a lot of yellows. Now I can add <laughs> an ash yellow to it. Mm, interesting. For my friends in Italy, I can add a Naples yellow. That's usually my jam right there. Um, there is a little more of a gold. You can definitely see that green has blue in it. Yes. So it's going to, when it hits this yellow, it's going to make it, uh, it's going to affect the green. Mm -hmm. That would make a really beautiful leaf color. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to lighten it up a little, right? Uh, make it real thin. Yeah. Let's try that. Let's go there. Yeah, dig it. See we go. That is your ochre, right? That's kind of a go-to for you, too. It's a yellow ochre, yep. And we're doing the green. Um, there's probably a logical way to do this. Again, I'm not that person. Kind of going on gut and eye in it. Do you have a favorite insect? Praying mantis. Yeah, love praying mantis. Apex predator of the insect world. Okay, so I want you to see what I see. So here's the, there's the ochre, there's the green. Let's see what we can find here in the middle. Oh. Adding water, very thin. Look at that, beautiful. That is such a beautiful shade of green. And I can lean it into Ooh, the yellow. Like Look that. at all the hearts coming up because people love that yeah, color. That, love is, that, green. that is such a beautiful color. And let's test it. Now, I also don't have to test it on the thing. I could test it. What are you listening to? Somebody 
Yeah. Some co- uh, some station. It's called Classical Chill. Oh, this is actually this little boy that sings. His name is Kai Thomas. What do you guys think? That looks pretty good, huh? See that? I think see, that might be our color. I'm going to try it. Let's see what we get. The worst that can happen is I could ruin it. You won't. Very thin. Do I draw? No, I don't draw. On faces. I draw on faces. That's right. There it is. Oh, I love it. That's very, that's very orchid green. That's I a very like. orchidy it's green. Like tropically. Um, I'm going to let that dry. You can see I did also the same thing. I just sketched it in really fast. Nothing crazy. I'm going to put a little bit here. I see the green on, we're going to call this the cowl. I see that probably a deeper shade, but I'm going to put a little bit in there. And we're going to have to remember. I'm, this I'm definitely going to have to remember because I won't remember that this is green mixed with um, yellow ochre. I'm going to take up a very thin version of it. In fact, I'm going to thin it out even more. This one, the light's hitting, so I want it to be a little lighter. It's very this one's springy, under a, Nicole. I agree. And it's funny, spring? It's very springy, this green. Yeah. And the funny thing is, I'm looking out right now. It's very, very gray here. You just kind of see the silhouette of all the tree branches against the vibrancy of the green. We have this super yellowy green... Um, willow tree, but we also just the green grass outside. Very gray out today. So it's very blue. But here we're trying to get some nice, we're ushering in the spring. So I I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm feeling a little braver. So now I'm going to, I'm going to dip into a little more of the straight green. It's easing into a, a pool for me. I am not like until I, and if I've been painting for the last two weeks, I would just start painting. I mean, I definitely get that confident. But I haven't painted in since the cover to Kenny and the Dragon 2. When was that, Ange? Last fall? Kenny and the Dragon 2? Yeah, I don't even know when I painted that. Yeah, it was like last fall, wasn't it? So when I haven't painted in a while, I tend to do a bunch of thin little glazes like this and kind of build up versus just being very bold. Because my confidence gets a little rusty. So I just punched up the green there. Look at that. Hmm. And you can see I'm just kind of, eh, you know, I mean, it's not a lot. It's not a like, I'm not painting a house. I'm just kind of putting some splots down. There's a little bit of color left in the brush. I'm just blopping it here where the wing's translucent just to get an idea. This is also, by the way, probably a little more um, detailed than I would normally do for this now also see the green is also hitting that yellow, yeah but we're gonna put the yellow in you always put the yellow in at the okay. end so i'm putting a little bit of that here now it's hitting the red that rusty red which is neutralizing the green because red is the opposite of green which is why we love it at christmas time all right i'm gonna let that sit maybe even hit it with the uh the old dryer not for very long because we're not really going to touch it for a bit and i'm going to focus the other thing i thought Angie, is the face when I'm looking at the orchid, the face could actually be yellow, which would be kind of different, unexpected. You think it's the chest? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, All right. Just looking. So we've got a little bit of a green, and we can futz with this green more, but now we've got something that's going to it's gonna play against everything else we're doing with our flowers. So once again, I ask, our, your original is kind of a light magenta. I'd almost say... I hate to say it, it's almost more... Your original is probably a very diluted version of this. Which pink are you saying? This. That kind of... It's actually... That's a magenta, right? Well, that's a magenta. Yeah. Now, I have a... But it does have a little bit of... I mean, I can go like a carmine. Mm. Well, no, I it's like more purpley. No, it's... Yeah, it's more purpley, Which but... is why I love this wine red. If I take this wine red... Yes. And I literally, I'm talking, this it is 90 is. water and 10 red. Agree. I can get that really light pink. So we're going to yes. try that. We're going to go, I'm going to stick to it. How do you avoid colors getting muddy? Uh, well, letting them dry. Don't just keep blopping them on. Don't overwork it. It comes with, it's learn. It's self-editing. It's learning how to stop and go, okay, it's done. I don't need to do any more. It's also it. like, you're pretty, like you're putting it all over, but you're concise with it at the same time. Yeah, it's thinking it's about where like, I'm going. Not, much different than when you start mixing too much play-doh together and it just gets brown yeah your kids probably made slime or you made slime and then you make a really cool color 
and it's got a cool texture. And then you're like, but I think I want to add more texture. And I think I want to add more color. And then maybe I'm going to combine slimes. And then I'm going to, and then, and then, and then, and then before you know it, you got mush. Uh, to give you an idea, I'm not even squeezing this. I touched it. I touched it. There's a little bit of red. There it is. That's it. Just a tiny touch because it's super potent stuff. That's why these tubes. The potent, 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 potent That's why these tubes last longer than. Um... Now, Ange. Why do you use gouache instead of watercolor? Uh, this could have been done in watercolor. I just like the gouache more. I'm thinking this where. So I'm actually going to, instead of following the pattern of the new orchid, I'm going to follow the pattern of the original orchid for this. And let's see what we get. You may like it, you may not. But it's... So it's more along the edges. In the one we saw, it's, it'd be in the center, but you're not going to see it if it's in the center. You want it in the center. She's giving me a look. I don't know. Um... Let me, let me... I'm just thinking of the markings that we delineated last week when we did a tonal study. Oh, I might have to get a little more paint. By the way, if you guys missed this, you can just go back and watch it. Like, Tony will post this afterwards. Yeah, they're all archived. Um, so We've been saving archived, them all. archived, so that way... Get a little more. Um, or, obviously, if people ask questions and I'm not able to get to it, you guys are more than welcome to answer it. Another touch of wine red. A lot of water. Hey, why I'm putting down this pink, and we'll wait and see what it, what you think. Um, we've got We've got some things happening this week, Ange. We should talk about it. Wednesday is a book birthday. Yay! <laughs> That's right. It's it's a book birthday, even though you're not on tour, which you would have been on tour right now. I you would have been... been on tour. I would have been in Texas, New Jersey today. Actually, I would have left last night. Yep. And That's taken right. a car to New Jersey. I would have been on book tour for the next two weeks. That's right. Um, and so I would be on the road right now. I wouldn't be here with you though. No. And our friends, all our I friends. Know, with all of you. So Wednesday is when your book, The Magical Yet, comes out. It'll be available everywhere. Here. I actually, if you guys weren't here the other day, I received my copies. She did. She got them. Here. It came out so good with illustrations by Lorena Alvarez. It's got literally magic in the title. And that's the yet right there, written by you know who, with illustrations by Lorena Alvarez. We'll do a reading of that later, and I'm going to do a giveaway of that on Angie's another day a, when you're not deep in painting. And she's going to do it. Well, I'll tell you what, but Wednesday, before we do Facebook Live, so at 2 o'clock Eastern, I'm going to be over at Simon & Schuster's page reading Kenny and the Dragon as part of their... Hold on, i got a thing for it. Is it Snack? Snack, yeah. Snack and Read. Snack so and read. Kids, or obviously, if you're not kids, tune in. I'm going to eat and t with my <laughs> mouth full of food, read a chapter of Kenny and the Dragon and take questions. So we'll set that up. So, you know, maybe it's a day of reading. Maybe Wait, when that morning, I'm going to be on Sirius XM. With, are you with Mindy? Kids Place Live. Oh, my God. For the Absolutely Mindy Show. If you guys have kids <laughs> and don't listen to Absolutely Mindy, you're missing out. It's on XM. We have listened to it for years. Sophia, our daughter, was obsessed with Absolutely Mindy. They do great book reviews. Um, they have Guy Raz, who they do the science with. Oh, my Loved gosh. It. All we the listen funny, to it. hilarious music that she plays. Oh, yeah. It's like all your favorite songs. Every, all the things. It's got all the things. It's so much fun. And she um, is so supportive of children's literacy. And so we have had a long relationship with Mindy over the years. And, and it's been terrific. She's such a great person and such a great family. So, and um, so supportive of us having us on for, I would say, most all of our books. We end up going yeah. on for. Yeah, and so, absolutely. So Wednesday is our busy day. So busy Wednesday, day Wednesday. I'm doing Sirius XM on the Absolutely Mindy show in yep. the morning. Tony will be doing Snack and Read Live with Simon & Schuster at 2 p.m. And then we will be here on Facebook Live at, at 3, 3 p.m. Busy day. So at Simon Kids, if you want to join us. So there it is. If it's just basically Facebook, 
Simon Kids. David oh. May, thank you for pre-ordering The Magical Yet on Amazon. It was a, The book was originally supposed to be coming out tomorrow, and I think because of shipping, it got pushed back a week. So it's coming oh. out on the 21st is when the books are now going to be shipping, which is why you're getting it on the 24th. Um, I think I'm going to do a little something special that if you've pre-ordered The Magical Yet and you send me a copy or um, or screenshot of the receipt, I am gonna send you a personalized video for whoever you purchase the book for. That's what I'm thinking, like little personalized videos. Whoa, like a cameo. Yes, exactly. An Andromo. Yes, so then I can like, if you're a teacher and you bought it for your class, if you're a parent, you bought it for your kids, I'll send a personalized message with a shout out if you let me know who you want it sent to. So I'm That's, gonna be doing that. I you're think. gonna be busy. <laughs> You're going to be busy, but you know what? Awesome. What time is the Absolutely Mindy show on? Emily Juster asked. Hello, I want to say, I want to say 9.30, right, Ange? Yeah, I'm going on, I think I'm going on at 9.30. I got to see what time I call in. It is, oh, I just got the email about it. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, 9.30 a.m. Wednesday, Sirius XM, Kids Place Live. Do you remember what channel that is? I will find out before we get out. Find out the here. channel. You should make a graphic. We should make a graphic and share that so people can tune in. Although I think they probably repeat their um, programming. Yes, I agree with that. Ange. Yes. It's coming out. Watch. It's when I put this yellow in, this thing's gonna totally go to the next level. But I'm not disliking it. I I'm like not it. Disliking it. It's channel seventy eight. Seven eight. Kids place live. Kids place live. Wednesday and nine thirty a.m. Be there. Also, if you're a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, I uh, you may not know. Little known fact: I well, maybe not so little known. I got my career throughout the nineteen nineties working for Dungeons and Dragons, as Ange can tell you. I illustrated for Dungeons and Dragons for throughout the entire nineteen nineties and worked on games like Planescape and uh, and just the regular good old Dungeons and Dragons, busting out the deep yellow because look. Pretty close. Oh, pretty close. Um, tomorrow, a gentleman by the name of Brian Stillman, who is a documentary film director, will be uh, launching his kind of podcast, Zoomcast thing called Into the Ultra, where he's going to basically interview nerds. Brian also directed the uh, documentary Eye of the Beholder, which you may have caught on Amazon which was about the uh, history of art for Dungeons and Dragons. Anyway, Brian and I spent an hour over the weekend talking about D&D &D and Planescape and how I got my start and all that, and that's going to air tomorrow at noon Eastern time. So I'll provide the links. I've, I've put a couple graphics up for it, and that'll be around forever. So, all right, I'm putting the yellow in, Ange. I'm thinking it goes here. And I'm, th I'm thinking these little guys, too, might need it. And I think her hands need it. You guys, thank you for joining us today. I'm seeing, like, we, we have more viewers today, so that means there are more people who are new to Drawn to Fantasy. We are so happy to have you guys here with, uh, with us. And um, I know a lot of uh, teachers have been sharing that we do this stream and um, other artists have been sharing that we do this stream. Our publishers have been sharing that we do this stream. And of course, all of you guys. So thank you so much for spreading the word about uh, our little gathering here. And uh, for those of you who don't know, and I know we mentioned it earlier, you can also join the Drawn to Fantasy fan page if somebody wants to post the link. If you're an artist and you want to share your art, uh, share away. It's a great yeah. group of people here. Angie and I went and visited it over the weekend, and I tried to look at everything that was posted and comment and and tell everybody what a wonderful job they were doing. There were some really terrific pieces of art. And I, I echo what Ange said earlier, where it's like, oh, I recognize that name. Oh, wow, their art's terrific. So I'm putting a little bit of yellow, Ange. You can see it. I'm, I'm keeping the yellow just around the central area. What was the name of the podcast you're doing, by the way? Uh, Into the Ultra. There's a link for it on my main Facebook page. If you just look on my, you know, the regular old Dieter Lizzie Facebook page. Um, you'll see a link with a graphic, and I'll talk about it tomorrow, because we'll have air. We'll air after it's after it has aired. 
So you can see I've got a little bit of the yellow. I'm not going crazy with the yellow. I'm just leaving the yellow right in this little area. I put a little bit of it in the green on the wings to kind of brighten that up. So it keeps drawing our eye towards the really the part that... Um, Dave Peterson wants to know what the face's color is going to be. Pink, lavender? <sighs> Dave Peterson just moving in for the kill. You're, you, you're at one step ahead of me, Dave. I'm not quite 100% sure. I'm going to add a little yellow to her feet. I feel like that would just to keep that yellow dancing around the piece. I don't know, Dave Peterson. Um, See, it's looking good. Once yeah? you get those dark darks in there. Yeah, so we haven't done the really green. dark reds. Uh, I was thinking when I was looking at this, like, that's the face. And says maybe it's more just this. And then we just get those really like that. The red, red, reds and the white there so uh, uh, what i love is that yellow the contrast of that darker scarlet against the yellow i mean that's yeah. so cool yeah i think the yellow could actually be a little more Agreed. a little stronger I agree. i've oversaturated the paper i can't add any more pigment so i'm gonna dry it out and we're gonna add another coat and that'll pump up the yellow a little more and it's gonna draw your eye to it the other thing well, I'll show you the other thing I'm thinking. So it's it's kind of a a plan, and then you're also make painting is also kind of making up on the fly, right, Andrew? I mean, you're kind of, it's for as much as I wish I had everything worked out, I don't always have it all worked out, and so I'm thinking that these. See, I need to almost just do it straight out of the tube. Just so you know, I just wrote down who's going to be getting our garbage today. Oh, got a someone special in mind. It's got thought behind it. It's okay. Not, this is not an arbitrary choice by any means. Ooh, I like it already. I'm intrigued. So here, I just put it almost straight out of the tube on there, and I'm gonna. Uh, now I've got a wet brush with a little bit of water. I'm just gonna pull a little bit out. Oh, T, it looks so good. You like it, huh? I love it. Okay, good. It makes me so happy. Good. I'm putting a little more of that down on the, just the fingertips, the extremities. I'm still not sure what to do with the face, Dave. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put a little wash of yellow over it, right here for the moment. But I'm I'll figure it out. It'll all it'll come together here. The other thing we haven't touched are the actual insect wings. And as any entomologist, that's the word for today, entomologist, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a person who studies insects. That's my Jeff Goldblum voice. Oh. That's what an entomologist does. An entomologist, any good entomologist worth their salt, will tell you that many insect wings are not just clear or blue. They, in fact, can be a variety of colors, including amber, brown, uh, yellow, uh, shades of blue. Look at these guys. A lot of yellow. A lot. There's kind of a pale orange. I think you need to take... Uh, here's a light green. So anyway, the, my point being that the wings themselves may get a little color or patterning before this is all yes. said and done, but I'm not sure yet. That actually... <laughs> That may be where all this party starts. It could be on the wings, but it may over make it over busy. I know you might just want to do translucent with veining because you have that green back there. I'm back to my wine red. I'm also realizing I didn't leave very detailed notes on what I did. Because <laughs> we just thought that this was going to be an exploration. You were like, oh yeah, I'm just going to try this. I have three other. Well, the good news is. The good news is I can go back and watch the video to make my notes. I remember that. That's Those. the leaf. That's the leaf. The pink. That's the leaf. Oh, well, is this. Right. So right now, I'm just going to show you how much paint we used so far to give you an idea. So starting with, well, we had the natural, we had the natural white. I'm going to zoom out. We, had, we started with this, this natural unbleached titanium. And then we did a little underpainting with these two. These two guys. Um, these, these two guys. guys. Little we had a little little ivory white. white on top of that with a little titanium white. I'm not going to hold that too. And then at this point, as far as local color, this is all we've used so far. This is it. So it gives you an idea. It's not a ton of paint. What would be interesting is you put all those colors, just even that, like that's now your like index colors, right? That's yeah. what you're using. Well, I'm going to set them to they... the side so I can make notes later that, mm -hmm. that if this is the one, because we're going to do another one. We're going to do, I don't think we'll do it today. We'll do another one tomorrow and then we'll, and we'll keep going. You know what I mean? We may look at it and go, man, that's not it. And also it all has to have the morning after test, right, Ange? Mm-hmm. And that morning after test. I feel test, like that yellow has to come. To a party? 
All right, getting a little, I'm switching to a little smaller brush. This is a number three for those, uh, you know, keeping tabs. I am just putting it right here. You can see it's pretty strong stuff. Don't want to take it. There's a little bit of yellow left here. I'm going to clean my brush and see if I can get some of that yellow. Why? Because I just want to see. Uh, I just want to put a little bit of that in there. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of that. Just to see. All right, let's see what we got. But you know what? The other thing is when you build up the translucent layers, it's almost like when you see the blood under skin. Yeah. You know, that's what brings the life to it. Yeah. Now I got an idea for these. I'm going to put the red centers, and then I'm going to go in with some white. I'm going to put make this like all white. The morning after test can be brutal. The morning after test Wait. is, uh, I don't look, you think this is amazing or you've stared at it for so long, you can't tell if it's good or not. So you walk away from it. Often for me, I'll work into the night. I leave it alone. I come down in the morning. I don't even think about the painting. I just want to walk in and see it with fresh eyes. That's the morning after test. Does it look as good as I thought it did or does it look bad as I thought it did? Or and, did I overwork it? Which yeah. is often when Usually you what work happens. too late. When I work too late, yeah, because my brain's not thinking clearly. And I've got the dark, dark reds. I don't know if it's enough. Part of me wonders if we should add some of this marking either in the wings or in the sleeve, maybe? I feel like we're... we're, we're... Dancing around it? Yes. I'm just going for it. This is the worst yes. I can do. Yeah, in the sleeves, I think, is... But do you, the other thing is, do you think it needs to be darker? No. It's I don't. not as dark as the darks in the... Your reference. Yeah, but I, I don't have to be slavish to no, the reference. Don't. It's just my inspiration. It's just kind of... Now, in the reference, they actually are going to feel darker here because they're against the contrast of the light. Oh, I'm seeing some hearts. People like this. Hmm. How do you pull back if you've overworked it? You don't. You yeah, don't. either overdo... Oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. up to being garbage and send it to someone in the mail. <laughs> yeah. They're like, keep going, don't stop. Um, I and it even I feel like maybe just a little bit here, like it's maybe a wash, and then just a little bit of this kind of patterning here. So it okay. keeps your eyes moving around the piece. Now there's one more thing I want to do, and I I want to. Yes, we've watched Minuscule. We love it, David Howe. Oh yeah, I love those. And Sophia tore those up. We we went through all of them. So good. So good. If you haven't watched it, there's these. I want to say it's French. Could be Belgium. What about the top of, like, you using that? So, uh, again, I'm wondering about this red right there as a stripe. I don't know. I'm just, I don't, we won't know until we know. But what I do want to do before we, before we call it a day is I'm going to take my, my ivory. I'm going to uncork it. I'm going to go clean my brush as best I can, dry it off. If I was Bob Ross, I'd be doing that thing where he throws it. I'm literally just taking it right out of the tube. Now, look at it. Look how depleted this one is. It's because I love this paint. And I'm literally just going to... <laughs> oh, you want to zoom in the screen more? So they can see what's yeah. going on. So you guys can get up on that detail. Oops. I toured it. <laughs> it got toured. Just, just seeing if I kind of. You got think. Tony's Edgar Allan Poe socks. You get a nice. Uh... Oh, here come the puppies. Here come the dogs. A little puppy play time. Here comes the kid. Hey, kid. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. How was your your tea? Good. Yeah. Good school. How was Good. school? What do you think, Soph? Ooh, that looks pretty good. You like it? <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of... That is a printout that he's painting on. He's trying... Um, to figure out the color, Soph. what the colors are going to be. I'm just using this ivory white on it. Um... I'm thinking of when I had this, I'm going to go back to, <laughs> there's the titanium left over from earlier. Look, at still there, still wet. I 
just want to pump up a little bit. I just want to see what happens if I... Are you going to do a final piece since this came out so nice? You will do a final piece. Oh, yeah, this isn't final. This is... I mean, this is a little more... Um, I'm futzing with it more than I normally would. When we do the others, they'll be a little looser. But yes, absolutely, we're going to do a final one. This isn't... Ange can tell you it's loosey-goosey. It looks good on your screen, maybe, but not in real life. Just kind of reintroducing some of this white back into it just to see what happens. I'll zoom out a little bit. Whoop, wrong way. So you can just kind of see what I'm doing. Yeah, I like that collar texture, too. I like the contrast of the... Um... The kind of collar against the little white. Yeah, it needed it needed a little something that's kind of pulling your. But I still think it needs the yellow, like. More yellow. Yeah, somewhere it needs. Maybe it needs it on these. Maybe this sleeve needs yellow, yes. or or we need to rim it with yes. yellow. Might be cool. Yes. I feel like it needs a little bit of that. A little yellow. more. Okay, I'm with you. I'm not adverse. How to do you that. mean final? Yes. Yeah, so this is just a, Fernando. If you weren't haven't been here with us the whole time, this is a, a color study of this piece that we you, Tony drew the other day, right? You were designing a kind of spiderwick inspired fairy. Yeah, I'll show you in a minute, Fernando. Hold on. I'll show you the difference of what we're doing. Again, this one's a little more because we we've, we've stretched it into an hour, so that you. I'm brushing on just pure white right now to kind of make it a uh, opaque. Okay up the the opacity of the wings a little bit oh why that's drying and also because you've layered so many kind of translucent layers it's yeah like, it's, it's getting a little muddy again. this is normally what these look like fernando they're normally a little looser here's a variation same palette just playing with variety and then here's the final yeah, see the final is a little more detailed fernando that's what we're going to do so this is just a little more tighter than normal but it will be it will get much tighter and it won't have that writing on it and it won't have this rip <laughs> once it's done all right let me play that yellow inch and then we'll call it a day and then we'll 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 uh revisit it tomorrow and we'll do another one tomorrow we'll do a completely different palette okay yeah let's pl tomorrow. play so with a different one and we'll see where we land. All right, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna break out this deep yellow, one of my favorite colors. Beautiful gold yellow. And I'm gonna make sure I don't put my paintbrush in my tea. Oh, you know what? That would be super fun. Is to just post the line art. Let other and people. And then you guys could print it out and paint along. Done. While you're painting. Whoever said that? Done. That's a great idea. I love that. Done. I'll do it. Well, Neto. Very good idea. All right, I'm 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 going to put a little here in the arm. I feel like it needs it. Oh, that, see, that helped. Love to the Philippines. Thank you for tuning in. That helped. Now I'm going to put along the edge. I don't know if you're going to like this or not. Is it too much? Me? Is that too much? Okay. I'm going to wipe it out a little bit. Yeah. So I cleaned the brush, but the yellow here would be more intense. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. You know, let's try it on the edge of the dress. Mm -hmm. I don't know, hopefully you guys can see the dress. Let me zoom in a little bit more here so you can see the whole. They're liking the yellow, Ange. You guys dig that? I'm seeing, I'm just, just, just touching. Uh, you can see I'm just. Oh yeah, I like that too, T. I think it needed it. Maybe it's something on the wings there. Maybe, I think the wings do need. But again, something. once you define the vein, veination. Veination. I'm, I'm, this is my original. Yeah, I want some in there. That's my original shadow. This isn't yellow. Mm -hmm. This is shadow. Yes. I just needed to get some of the shadow return. Also, there would be some of this in the wings. This kind of. The, the yellow adds to it, right? It just brings it to life a little bit more. I think it just creates a little more dimension. Yeah. This would be shadow. Oh, Molly would love to do it, but you don't have a printer. That's a bummer. Oh, yeah, that is a bummer. You can do it digitally, Molly. We have done this digitally before. I just chose to do it this way today so I could uh, speed the process along. The only difference for me is if I had done this digitally, uh, as I said earlier, I'd have to go back in and figure out, you know, I'd have to color match. 
Glad you guys are liking this. I agree. I'm liking it too, and I'm wondering if oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go way in on the face here. I'm just thinking like yeah. I don't know if there's yellow on the nose. How often do you dip your brush in your water in your drink? I'm cleaning what? it. Oh, in my drink, <laughs> not not too often. I'm pretty good about that. I like the little bit of that. Maybe even the eyes are yellow. I don't know. There's something there, but I think I'm gonna let it go and let it stop for the day because I do fear that we'll overwork it. So let's do a zoom out. This will be a fun, uh, boy, this would have been a fun, uh, whatchamacallit too, time lapse to see it. We'll go from yeah. something, nothing. So really, you know, actual paint time was probably a half an hour, maybe 40 minutes yeah. when it was all said and done. We stopped and we explained some things and we looked up and did research and that's such a big part of this process. But this is one down and you're right, Ange, we got more to go. Now I could do, um, let me just grab a really thin brush. My gut tells me, and I could totally ruin this right now in the 11th hour, but my gut tells me that if I was going to do the veins, I would do them in that crazy red. So I'm going to just tr I'm gonna try to see if that would be a cool way to tie the red in. So I'm going to, I've got a thin brush. I've got this wine red that I love. It's very similar. I'm just showing how the veins could be done in a color. Did I ruin it? Yeah, you don't like the red. I don't like that. Okay. <laughs> that's just me. Well, that's personally. That I, I just think to... I would say, like, not a color. Just do a brown. Yes. Okay. I'm using like colored a pencil. Even. But just brown. Yeah. Okay. Let me lift it back out. Yes, we love music, Stephen Dale. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. It's I've pretty much worked it to to the fiber. You can see it's actually, the, especially on the wings, it's almost lifting now. The pipe paper, give you an idea how wet it is. I've definitely this is one worked color study, but it was a good. We got a lot done, and uh, I have more to more to go. So we'll do some more um, tomorrow. We'll do another one. We'll go in a completely different direction. I agree. You could, like, I would say, like, you know what would be interesting would be it takes a flush of that yellow that's on the breast and just put it at the base of where the um, wings are. Yep. I've seen that. Insects definitely right. have that. I won't do it now because it's, so uh, it's so wet. Although, well, hold on. Maybe it'll work. over today sorry guys this is kind of what it would be let's see the it's the, the paper's so wet and it's so worked and laden with pigment but it gives you a little bit of an idea what it would kind of look like not bad especially if i kind of pull it out it's interacting with a ton of other color anyway i'll let that dry we'll look at it again tomorrow and see what we think and then we'll do another one in the meantime Ange. Who's our winner today? In the meantime, today... Who's winning the trash? Besides the dogs going ballistic right now. Wow, it's quite a show. Um, you know, what this is about to me and this whole kind of weekend and taking a step back has been about the circle of inspiration. Yes. And that we're kind of putting things out to you. You guys are connecting with it. You're giving it back to us. Other artists are now joining us. And I want to take a moment to thank all of you artists who are here with us. Um, and I want to highlight an artist who has been an inspiration to us, whose work we love. And today I would like to um, send our garbage to Dave Peterson. Dave, Dave Peterson. Peterson. I like that. That's a very good idea. Because Ange. you know what? Dave has taken his time every day to join us. Yes. You know, he's working too. All of you guys are working. So, you know, just a shout out to Dave Peterson. Thank you, Dave. It means a lot that you're here with us too. And if you're not familiar with Dave's stuff, he's the author of the graphic novel and illustrator, of course, Mouse Guard, which I would go run. I'll go and run and grab it. And you talk for two seconds. Yes. So, yes, he is the author and illustrator of, uh, of Mouse Guard, the graphic novel. Graphic novel, right? That's right. You could consider that um 
and uh, you, you're very surprised, Dave. Yay, <laughs> Dave! Big congratulations. If We're huge not- fans. We've all read it. It's basically D and D with mice. It's it's amazing. This the quality. And if you don't know Dave, you should follow Dave. He, unlike me, builds tiny sets that he uses to reference. He has um, coloring pages and and paper crafts. I look at that. And he's always giving of himself and his work. Yes. And sharing his techniques. Um, he does a Twitch stream that you, you can, can follow. literally watch him do what I'm doing live on Twitch. We're huge fans. We love you, Dave. Thanks for coming and tuning in every day with us. It means a lot. And um, and you ready to play us out? Oh yeah, absolutely. I got distracted by all of your amazing and supportive comments. Sorry about that. We'll tune in again tomorrow. We'll do some more drawing, our painting, and. Um, Wednesday, Ange is going to read. I'm going to read. Kenny and the Dragon take some questions before we jump to it. You ready, Ange? You guys, this is what you've been waiting for, a painting day. I'm so painting excited day. that we got to it. All week we're painting. Painting, painting, painting. You're going to be sick of painting by the time we're done. <laughs> I will post this high-res file so you guys can download it and color it as well. In the meantime... Thanks again, Emily C. Martin. Thank you, thank you, Emily, for creating the the group. I will post it for sure on the. Fa- I'm going to post it on the fan group. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, how you're going to oh, yeah, get the high res. Put the ink. Yes, the high res. All of it. We'll all go the on the fan, fan group. Page. Join it. You guys are terrific. Be continue to stay safe and well. Hang in there. Um, try not to watch the, the news too much. Just enough to be put informed. Put on Harry Potter like we have every night. Just put on Harry Potter. <laughs> you guys are terrific. Take care of yourselves. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you on for joining us on Drawn to Fantasy. Thank you all. Be well. We did it. That was a good one. And we're drawn to fantasy. We did that was it. That's awesome. We did it. We did it. High five. High five. <laughs> that was the worst high five. Ah, ah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are awesome. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Now go. Go home. What are you still doing here? There's still 140 people still here. What more can I give you? (laughs) Here. Go eat. I I feel like I'm Ferris Bueller. Here, look. Here's the the setup. (laughs) There's all the paints. I, t- I promised I'd show it to you. There it is. Pippin's here. He's ready. See, it just gets crazy at the end. You guys are amazing. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.